Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video and another tutorial with the new F1 game coming out recently. It's of course I make my customary yearly tutorial on how to make a custom My Team livery in the most recent F1 game, that being F125. If you've watched these every year, you'll understand it's going to be a similar process to the last few years. But of course, it's best to touch up on some things and go over any changes that may have happened with this game's release. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel as we're nearing 10k once again. So let's get into the video. As usual, you're going to need to download and install when writing on the English version or any other language that you speak. You'll need the Intel DDS plugin. When you get to the screen, it'll give you a step by step on how to install the plugin, which is really helpful. It's a bit mundane now and not necessary, but the old NVIDIA DDS tool is helpful for certain needs. It's not required, but it's something you can install if you really need to. We're going to need to download the car template and JB has got it on his Patreon. What you're going to want to do is download the 25fom.psb. If you click on that, it will automatically download. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe to JB. He is an absolute legend. I've got a massive amount of ERP archivers on my PC. Only a few of them do work with the new current game. So I've put the link in the description of the one that is working for me currently at the moment. You want to download that to your desktop. And once you've done that, you're ready to go. I'm going to be about shouting out the page and we can get custom mods, custom helmets and videos a little bit earlier from any help regarding topics. I'm also putting out a Discord which will be sorted out through the Patreon for one-to-one -one help, any technical feedback you guys need and potentially future mods dictated by you guys. If you're interested, check the description below to the Patreon and let's continue. And of course, if we're going to be using Photoshop, you're going to need version 21.2.4 ideally. Um, there's been a lot of issue over the last few videos as people requesting can i just send the link send the link i can't for obvious reasons distribute a version of photoshop that is um, essentially almost non-existent right i can't do that for obvious reasons it's not possible for me to do that it is out there there are ways and i've been able to help a few people navigate that um but you know just obviously for educational purposes i can't distribute anything like that as i don't own it and it's not a smart thing to do for me to uh, distribute it freely, publicly to everyone willy-nilly. So um, I promise you guys it's it's out there 100%. But the reason you want that is for those who are not aware, the lack of 3D functionality has been moved over to a different software altogether, which down the line we will be making videos on. It's just not as readily available as a Photoshop is. So with these two on the desktop, we're going to open up the ERP archiver. I'm going to put it on the desktop. Now, one of the best things to do, the smart things to do, before we do anything else, we're going to open up the ERP archiver. We're going to go to settings, game directory, and set directory. This is going to be where your game is stored. So if you're not unfamiliar with where your game is, I'd like to think you should know. More often than not, it's going to be on your C drive, as that's where games should be nowadays, given that we're in 2025. You just want to click the folder of the game, and then that sets it off later on, so we don't have to worry about any issues. Another thing to do, what I noticed with this year's game, you're going to want to set it to run as administrator by default. Into compatibility, you're going to click run this program as administrator, click apply, click OK. Every time you double click it, it'll then ask you for administration and then it'll open. I had an issue where it wasn't allowing me to write initially, but that seemed to fix up quite quickly. We can delete this now, we don't need it no more, and we can open up Photoshop. So once you've opened up your FOM, PSB, we want to do the best thing you can do to make your life a little bit easier is if you were to save two cloud documents, that's going to save it in your creative cloud and it saves every so often and more or less when you do anything, it will save automatically. The best way to do that is just to make sure things work and things don't break, go wrong or you have any issues really because the last thing you really want is to get halfway through a livery and then it crashes, the absolute worst thing. So once you've done that and it's on creative cloud, then you are away at the races. So on the right hand side, so you've got a few texts. You've got the number here. You've got the paint, the carbon, and the decals. The carbon is obviously going to be the areas marked as this. So if we change it to pink, for example, you'll be able to see what areas are changed to that. And then same, obviously, with the paint. Naturally, you'll be able to enable your UV overlay on the right. If you don't have that, then there's a slight issue with your version, and you would need a different one. So then naturally, you're able to paint on the car uh, more or less how you want. Obviously, there's some gaps in the wireframes, which would make it a little bit trickier. But generally speaking, the way to navigate that if you wanted to is if you create a new layer inside of here, if you kind of line up how you'd want your stuff to be, if you kind of line up how you want your things to be. So, for example, if we write on the front wing on both sides, I, as an example, it would then appear on the front wing as so. However, another option is you create a new layer again. Go back to the car. If it doesn't load or change, if you just hide the texture you're working on, 
reopen it, it's gone. So, second example, what you can do, if we take, for example, our logo, and we slap it on the front wing, kind of how uh, Rebel used to do work back in the day, back before they replaced it with sponsors, which was a shame. So if we take these two, and then this time if we right click and merge down, it will then put it on the front wings. And this time it's already split up and it's already like that. It's like a very early phase of that substance painter, but obviously doesn't necessarily work as well anymore. So you can obviously customize, you could spend hours on this. When I did my helmet, which I'll get to in the next video, I spent a good amount of time doing it and uh, trying to get everything to work as it should do. So you could spend an outrageous amount of time on a livery. I'm just going to make a very simple and I'll see you in just a second. Here is what I've come up with. I've come up with essentially a pink Alpine. I can't remember if we had one this year. I don't think we did, which made me want to essentially just make the pink Alpine. Uh, very basic, very simple. I basically pulled the decals off the current car and whacked it on for the test purposes. So that's done. Um, again, it looks fine. Uh, there's no issues at all. So I have made a spec map, which I'll get around to baking again at some point so what we need to do now is to save these textures so always want to make sure that you backed up and make sure that you save all of your files before you do this so what we're going to do is get file save as and let's create a alpine folder let's create an f1 25 mods folder and we'll create a new one called my theme livery so in this for example we're going to for the save format you want to go to intel texture works if you can't find it, you need to reinstall your plugin and we'll call this paint. I'm going to save this as color BC1 SRGB auto generate and then click OK. For your spec map, for your spec map, if you do have the, so we're going to call this spec map and then you can essentially just go, you can save this one as linear, no need for SRGB. So beautiful. So once that's done, you can then close out of this for the floor slash carbon fiber. You're going to want to save this as the same as the paint and call this floor. Make sure to change that to sRGB. For the floor spec map, it's exactly the same as you would for the paint. Once again, make sure that your Photoshop is saved. And we can then open up your ERP archiver. So when you're in, you're going to want to open asset groups. And this time we're going to go livery package. You go world vehicle package, teams, world car, web, and open up the world car. So in here, you're going to have all sorts of stuff. You can have the numbers, which you can change. For the benefit of doing the F-175, everyone should have it. And also it does have a floor, which is kind of the crucial thing. So for F-175, you're going to replace it with your paint. You're going to double tap enter and it will instantly replace it. The decals you leave as is, you will need to eventually replace this logo. But for the time being, that's not important. For the carbon floor, you're going to go textures, import, and this time you replace it. For the floor, naturally, you're going to replace it with your floor. Once again, double tap. IDAS is your floor spec map. Go ahead and replace that. And then finally, F175S is just your normal spec map for your paint. So once you go ahead and replace that, double tap, enter. Beautiful. So once you've done that, you're going to go hit file, save, and replace this here. Then you want to backtrack, and we're going to need to replace some more files. If you go back to your asset groups, 25 vehicle package, teams, common FOM, and you're going to have to replace the exact same files again. So the F175D will be your paint file. ID8D is going to be your floor file. ID8S, once again, floor spec map. And finally, F175S is your normal spec map. Once you've done that, you're ready to hit file and then save as there. Then you should be good to go. You're ready to close down the ERP archive and open up the game. So once you're in the game, we're ready to head over to F1 World, followed by customization. And you can see immediately our car is already there. Again, I haven't done the rear wing just for the sake of uh, trying to explain how this is done. But generally speaking, it's really quite easy in terms of getting um, the bulk of it done and dusted. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time getting everything done to a much better quality, but I think there's a few little tweaks this year compared to the last few years on how to get this livery to work. But anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure to slap a like it. If you have any issues, make sure to message me either on Twitter, Patreon. I'll try and get through to the comments as soon as I can. And then, yeah, guys, I'm interested to see what kind of liveries you guys create. Of course, once again, make sure to check out the Patreon for one-to-one -one help and mods coming through. Once this is actually probably finished, I'll probably end up making this a proper livery eventually. Until the next video, guys, which will probably be the helmet tutorial. Take care. Bye-bye.